Welcome back everyone, as you could tell by the title, yes I did install the newest macOS beta on the oldest supported iMac, and what's funny is, is that I did this last year not on my iMac but on my MacBooks, and it was a pretty interesting experience, and with the iMac it's no different. Now theoretically and strangely enough the lowest supported MacBook or iMac that is capable of running macOS Monterey is actually the 2015 iMac, and it's funny because that's the exact same iMac I had, and here's the thing you know, I'm a fan of Apple, I love iMacs, I love all these types of devices. But I always found it really weird when, you know, Apple kind of skips a couple generations here between updates. And in this specific case, uh, you know, the last one, Mac was Big Sur, there was a lot of devices supported. And this time around, they cut out a lot of devices that really didn't need to. Now with this iMac, you know, it was my main device. I liked it a lot. I rarely ever use it anymore. The Mac OS Monterey was a pretty big update, you know, it, it installed fairly easily, no bugs and no nothing like that thankfully, although once installed it was perfectly smooth sailing, there really wasn't anything super crazy that I found with it. I think maybe the only issue that I found right out the gate was probably some aspect ratio issues that happened right when I booted up, and I think other than that I was perfectly fine to be honest. Now I do want to say, over the camera it does look like there were quite a bit of performance issues and a lot of lagging. Now I think this is one of two things. Obviously it's a beta, it's not going to be perfect. But the other thing is, is that I was screen recording the whole entire time I was recording this video, mostly so I could get, you know, both aspects, you know, one for recording and one for not. So do keep that in mind, because screen recording sometimes can take a huge toll on the, you know, device, especially on a six-year-old iMac like this, and especially on a beta. So keep that in mind, this performance is not going to be as it is, like, day to day, because I can tell you, like, after using it for, like, a day, I definitely would not recommend you installing this and using it on your personal machine, but it isn't at that bad you know i think mac os betas are definitely some of the most buggiest softwares and definitely ones i would recommend people to avoid especially on their main machines but because this imac is now my main machine i can feel comfortable just installing it and if it breaks then i can reset everything there's nothing on there that's critical to me anymore so it really doesn't matter so that's the one aspect right the performance thing is the one thing i think a lot of people want to hear about it's definitely buggy i don't feel like it's slower it's just much choppier so keep that in mind but the funny thing is I was coming from macOS, you know, Mojave from before and I didn't install Big Sur because I had already switched to my M1 MacBook at that time. And here's the thing, you know, I think Catalina, I think Big Sur are, were great updates. I think they brought a lot to the table probably. But with every update, it just seems like there are more and more issues and more and more bugs that come up. And it just seems like the difference between macOS Big Sur and macOS, you know, Monterey, there was just such a little difference that I'm just like, what did they even do? You know, you can go on their page, you can see all those little improvements that they did here and there. But for the most part, you know, it really is just an updated Big Sur. You know, Big Sur was that big update that we were looking for, and Mac OS Monterey is a little bit of a different story. You know, I think there's some improvements with FaceTime and different things like that, but a lot of the updates are really only for those latest and greatest Macs. There's really not a crazy amount of updates that, you know, these smaller ones or the, you know, cheaper ones like, yeah, 5K Mac I have that we got. And that's kind of a sad thing. Again, keep that in mind. I think it's okay, you know, things like this happen. But I think ultimately, I'm excited for this next, you know, bit of MacBooks and iMacs getting these updates. But the sad thing is things like universal control, you know, we can't or we can't get support on our 5K iMac for the from 2015. And there's different little things like that, like live text, that's another thing, you know, there's just a ton of things that I'm just like, why didn't Apple just bring these to all older iMacs too? There was already such a limited amount of features to begin with, and it would have been cool had we gotten them on the next bit of iMacs, but I guess we didn't. So that's really pretty much it. I mean, I would not recommend installing it at all. Stay on your latest version from, you know, official sport. Do not install a beta. It's just not worth it in my opinion. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button. That would so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.